using the visualization that I mentioned earlier on in the week as well, of just imagining you're smelling your favorite rose or your favorite smell and you're breathing in deeply through the nose. You can't get enough of it. And then you hold it for a moment. And then as you breathe out, you're breathing out slowly and steadily as if to blow out the flame of the candle, but that it's a little bit away. You don't want to just do it in one go. So you're trying to make that out breath as long as you possibly can. So once more, breathing in. Pause and then breathing out. And then just coming into a settled, effortless pose. And noticing, is there anything that I can do to get make myself a little bit more comfortable? So if you need to use extra blocks or cushions under the knees, a blanket over the lap or even around the shoulders if you're a little bit chilly or anything like that. And closing over the eyes or just a gentle gaze down towards the floor, trying to keep a very soft focus. So you're softening the muscles around the eyes. You're letting go of the effort of doing and instead just coming into a restful state of being, if you can. It's not an easy thing to do, especially at the beginning of the day, near the end of the week and with everything that's been going on. It's, uh, yeah, it's finding our steady, comfortable seat. And so doing a little body awareness, a little body scan from the top of the head to the bottoms of the toes, the tops of the toes. So being aware of the crown of the head extending upwards towards the ceiling. How does the head feel today? If there's a lot going on in the mind, it's not trying to stop those thoughts. It's actually just accepting, yeah, that's how I'm feeling today. And if the thoughts are coming and coming, just gently having a hand on either side of the head, acknowledging, yeah, those thoughts are going to come. I'm not going to try to stop them. If you try to stop them, it's impossible. So it's just gently bringing the awareness back to the physical body when you notice that you're thinking about those thoughts again or focusing on those thoughts again. So bringing the awareness onto the head, the scalp, the mind, your thoughts, being accepting, non-judgmental, connecting in with the breath. And bringing the hands around to the front of the face, cupping the hands over the eyes, enjoying the darkness and how that helps to soothe the muscles of the eyes. Taking a nice deep breath in through the nose with each breath in. And a gentle breath out through the nose now to start to connect with the Ujjayi breath. So where we can almost hear the breath at the back of the throat. And bringing the hands down to cup either side of the face. So noticing the jawline, how is the jaw feeling? Is there any clenching? How's the tongue in the mouth? Sometimes we don't even notice if there's a lot of clenching or the tongue is sort of jammed behind the teeth or up at the roof of the mouth. Can we soften the muscles? Maybe separating the teeth slightly, softening the tongue. And notice the back of the throat, the swallow. I'm bringing the hands down on either side of the neck and throat. So you can bring the hands around to the back of the neck if that's more comfortable rather than at the front. And just noticing how the neck is feeling. You might even move the head very gently from side to side. Tipping the chin towards the chest, lifting the chin again, protecting and supporting the neck at the back. So sort of doing a nice little tilt down and up and then at the center, left and right. Maybe even dropping the left ear down on the right ear and then coming back to center again. Bringing the hands then down to the upper chest, so both hands over the heart. A little bit of pressure on the upper chest, noticing the chest rise and fall as you breathe in and as you breathe out. And then the left hand on the lower tummy, right hand on the upper tummy. And just see if when you breathe in, you could soften the tummy so the tummy would rise and then fall as you breathe out. And the move might be very slight or you might just imagine the movement, that's okay. 
And then bringing the hands into prayer position, pressing the thumbs to the heart center and bowing the head for a moment. And setting yourself a little intention, taking this little break out of the day, nearing the end of the week. Showing yourself how important it is and how easy it can be to just take a couple of moments, even if it's five minutes, to just connect in with the breath, with those contact points along that line from the top of the head down to the tummy and being aware of how the arms and the legs are feeling, the toes and the fingers. And breathing deeply in through the nose and out through the nose. Feeling that grounding sensation of breathing into the earth, feeling the support of the props. You're being held. This is your time for this next half an hour. Just to carve out a little me time in the day. And to bring the awareness physically, mentally, energetically. And then breathing in, sweeping the arms up, like we always begin stretching upwards, lifting upwards, looking up at those hands, breathing out, bringing the arms back down by the sides and extending the mouth behind you. You can even lean forward a little and gaze down at the floor. Breathing in again, lifting the arms up, looking up at those hands, reaching the arms up towards the ceiling, maybe even moving from side to side, feeling one arm extending up and then the other arm extending up. One side extending up and then the other and reaching both up and then breathing out the next time, bringing the arms back down by the sides, extending them behind you again and doing the same sort of thing. So reaching one hand further behind than the other, you just feel it a little into the sides of the body. And then bringing the hands back down by the sides again, one hand slides along the floor. So in line with your hip and the elbow starts to drop down towards the floor. Make sure that it's not pointing out backwards. So the elbow is dropping down. The other hand lifts up towards the ceiling and looking up at that hand if you can and just staying here for a moment. Notice if the shoulder is rising, can you bring the shoulder down? And if the hip is lifting, can you bring the hip down? So making the hip and the knee nice and heavy. And then bring the arm overhead. So with this, you can feel a deeper sense of the stretch between each of the ribs. So the intercostal muscles are getting a little breathing space. So as you breathe into the side of the body, connecting, making sure that those shoulders are down, moving down, and the hips are heavy, reaching out through the fingertips. And then the next breath in, you're going to come back upright and let that hand float down onto the floor and we lift up the hand on the other side. But once again, getting yourself into position. So never kind of moving straight into a position and missing out the opportunity to just check the alignment. So the hand on the floor is pointing out from the side of the hip. The elbow is dropping down towards the floor, not back behind. The other arm is reaching up. So making sure that the hip is staying heavy, the shoulder is coming down. So you're really stretching the whole side of the body and filling into the space between the ribs. And then when you're ready, bringing the arm overhead. So feeling a nice deep stretch into the side of the body. One side might feel tighter than the other, and that's okay. It's just noticing, bringing that awareness to, to the different sensations in the body, all without judgment. We never start to berate ourselves or question why, why is that happening? Just go, that's an interesting thing. I should breathe into that area. Take a nice big deep breath in through the nose and out through the nose. Once more in through the nose and out through the nose. And then coming back up to centre slowly and purposefully, bringing the hands back down on either side. Breathing and sweeping the arms up overhead, reaching out through the fingertips, breathing out, hinging forwards, dropping the fingertips down onto the floor and let the head, shoulders, back and neck relax. So you're softening into the Uttanasana forward fold. You can bring the palms of the hands down onto the floor. I'm really allowing yourself to breathe into this. So it shouldn't be, the postures shouldn't be effortful. You're looking for the connection with the breath work to allow you to fold into these. And it's not about a shape. It's about 
the feeling of connectedness between the breath and the body and the mind, slowing everything down and being grateful for every movement that we have, that we can do, be it imagining, feeling, sensing. All the time, bringing the mind back to the breath work and how it's feeling in the body if you find that you're drifting with your thoughts again. So we do that thousands and thousands of times a day. Uh, and that's part of the practice is that enjoyment of noticing when our awareness has, has moved away again. Then looking forward at the hands, you're walking over to the left hand side. So really trying to keep your hips pointed forwards. You're centering your upper body over that knee, getting a nice little side twist, side stretch and twist. And then walking the hands over to the other knee. Another nice little twist and a side body stretch. And we're not staying too long here with these. Well, we come back to the center again. Breathing in, bring the arms back up overhead. And then as you breathe out, bringing the hands down on opposite knees. So you're crossing over the hands, holding the knees. Breathing in, lifting up, breathing out, hinging forwards. So it brings a nice broadness to the lower back and to the upper back. And you might feel it into the glutes and the hips as well. Don't forget to breathe. Next breath in, lifting up the head and shoulders, lifting up the hands on crossing them and then breathing out, crossing them over the opposite direction. So the other hand goes to the front, lifting up out of the pelvic bone, breathing out, hinging forwards, relaxing into the posture, softening and releasing. And then breathing in, lifting up the head and shoulders, bringing the hands up again, and then breathing out, bringing them back down by the sides. Lovely. You can take out the cushions from underneath the knees or the blocks, whichever you have. Lifting up the legs, and you can use your hands to lift up the legs as well, there's no problem, and to extend the legs out. Give the legs a little shake, a little rock from side to side. And as we do, we travel through the fingers and the joints of the hands and the feet. So wiggling the fingers, wiggling the toes, closing up the fists and then rotate the ankles and the wrists, getting a nice movement in both. Making the connection between your limbs, your legs and your arms uh, and all of the joints of those and how they can partner up. So when we're moving our fingers, move our toes. When we're moving our ankles, moving our wrists. When we're moving our knees, moving our elbows and shoulders and hips. So giving everything a little rock and a shake, even with the arms as well. Hands over to the side, sweep the knees under. We'll come to tabletop. Again, if there's any sensitivity in the knee, putting a little blanket underneath the knees for a little bit of padding, make sure that the fluid in the joint doesn't cause any discomfort or pain. Place the front of the feet flat down on the floor. First fingers pointing forwards and then spreading the other fingers and thumbs. The gaze is just ahead of the hands. Breathing in, lift the tailbone up, drop the tummy, roll the shoulders back and lift the head. Breathing out, tuck the tailbone under, arch the spine, drop the head. Breathing in, lift the tailbone, drop the tummy, lift the head. And tucking the tailbone, arching the spine and dropping the head. So continuing that in your own time, with your own breath, enjoying the full flow, holding it in each position if you want to, if that is where you feel you should be working at the moment. And just one more in and out. And then we're going to extend the left leg behind, curling the toes under. So I know my video, <laughs> the couch cuts out my leg, but it is there. I'm extending the leg out behind. Toes are curled under. And then when you're ready, 
lifting up the leg in line with the hip if you can. We're going to extend the other arm straight out. And as you can see, I'm reaching into my bookcase. <laughs> so we're getting a nice little balance using the abdominal muscles. This helps to strengthen the abdominals and the lower back. And just check if you need to draw in the belly and tuck the tailbone under a little to give you a little bit of further stability. And bring then the elbow and knee together under and then extend back out again. So you're breathing in, extending out, breathing out, bringing the elbow and knee together again. Once more, extending out. And then breathing out, coming back in. Meet in the middle and then bringing the hand and knee down onto the floor. We do the other side. So extend the right leg out, curling the toes under. And check when you curl the toes under that you've got all of the toes. Your little toe, toe might not be uh, reaching the floor, but you're, you're looking to try to keep the, the ball of the foot on the floor. So that makes sure that the leg is straight and the hip is rotated in the correct position. Lift the leg up in line with the hip and then extend the opposite arm alongside the head. Finding the balance and drawing in the lower belly. You might be tucking the tailbone very slightly under in order to give you a little bit more stability. Breathing in and then breathing out. Elbow and knee together. And then extending the back out again. Using the breath to give you that balance. Bring the elbow and knee together and extend out. And once more, elbow and knee together and extending out and hands down on the floor, knee down on the floor. Bring the big toes together, knees wide of the mat, sitting down on the heels, reaching the arms forward. Little fingers to the outside edges of the mat, elbows up off the floor and the forehead is coming down towards the floor. Don't worry if you don't reach all the way down. You can use a cushion or a block. Rest the forehead on the block or the cushion. The important thing here is keeping the elbows up off the floor. So that helps to give that big, long stretch from the hips all the way to the lower back, the coccyx, the hips all the way up to the tops of the shoulders, the base of the skull. You're also stretching into the sides of the body. So lifting the head now, if you have a cushion in the way, you might want to move that out of the way. Keeping the knees and the hips where they are. Walking the hands over to the left hand side. So again, we're working into the side of the body. And your gaze is just down at the floor. When you're in this position, this really helps to deepen that side body stretch. And then coming back to center and walking the hands over to the other side. So once again, you're fully exposing the side of the body. Breathing into the sides in between the ribs. And then walking the hands back to center again. Next breath in, coming back up into tabletop. Bringing the knees towards one another, but still a little space between them. And slide the hands forward a little bit. So you're not in direct tabletop, you're sliding them forward and a little bit wider. You curl the toes under, lift the knees up off the floor to hover just for a moment, and then bring the hips back towards the heels. Keep the knees nice and bent. So that allows you to take the weight off the wrists, and it also helps us stretch the back. And then drop the knees down again, sitting back down on the heels, reaching the hands forward. We're just warming up the shoulders and the hips. And once again, coming back up, curling the toes under, lift the knees to hover off the floor, bring the hips back towards the heels, and this time straighten alternate legs. So you're kind of pedaling out the legs and you might even turn from side to side. So you could lift one hand up off the floor and then lift the other hand off the floor. So just being really kind to yourself and noticing, OK, I could actually bring my weight into one hand and both feet and lift one hand and then the other side. 
And then coming forward, dropping the knees down wide, sitting back on the heels, reaching the hands forward. Then coming upright, bringing the weight forward, we're going to lie down on our tummies for just a moment. So lowering yourself down slowly towards the floor. And we're going to bring the left foot in towards the buttocks. So we're just going to hold with our hand, if you can reach the foot. If you can't, it's absolutely fine. You're just reaching one hand back and bringing the foot towards the buttock. If you can bring the hand around the front of the foot, you're just helping to stretch the front of the leg, so the quad. And then release that foot, and we do the other side. So the right foot comes in towards the buttock, right hand reaches back onto the front of the foot, brings the heel in towards the buttock. And as I said before, if you can't reach, that's no problem at all. You just bring bending the knee and you're also bringing the arm back. So that's helping to stretch the front of the body. Letting go of that, bring the hand down. This time, we're going to bring both knees up and both hands back and lift the nose away from the floor. Now, again, if you can't reach the feet, that's no problem. If you can, you're just bringing the hands onto the fronts of the feet and helping your feet are pressing into the hands so they help to bring the shoulders back and your gaze is just down at the floor. However, there's plenty of different options for this. So you could be just reaching the arms out to the sides towards the back of the body, knees are bent, toes are touching, as if you were skydiving. And your gaze is just down at the floor, it's, it's a real strengthener for the back. And then releasing down towards the floor, rolling the shoulders forward, turn the head to one side, bend up the knees and wave the legs from side to side, releasing all effort in the lower back. And then turn the head the other direction, and continue to wave the feet from side to side. Place the feet back down on the floor. The hands are going to come underneath the shoulders. Then you're sliding them forward and then slightly outside the width of your mat. So it's almost like you've got the um, cactus arms on the floor. Your gaze is at the floor. You press, your feet are slightly separated pressing the pubic bone into the floor. So the whole front of the feet and the legs are on the floor. And gently start to lift the upper body up away from the floor. You can use the hands to deepen the front of the body stretch. And as you do this, notice if you're gripping with your glutes and if you can actually soften your bum muscles. Coming up only as far as is comfortable. If you can straighten the arms, like your hands are slipping like mine, and um, you can bring them onto the mat. And you could even actually come into Sphinx, which is um, bending at the elbows and placing the elbows and the forearms on the mat. So if that's not available, just coming up as far as is comfortable. There's a lot of stuff going on with the back bend and it takes a lot of work. So just being gentle, respectful of whatever your body is telling you today. Again, if you can lift up the elbows, great. Your gaze might be going forwards, but if that's not available, that's fine. Drop the elbows back down. And then crossing the forearms across the top of the mat, resting your forehead on the arms, bend the knees, sway the legs from side to side. Placing the feet back on the floor, hands underneath the shoulders, press the floor away and bring the hips back onto the heels, bring the knees and the lower legs together so you're in child's pose. So you're sitting back on the heels. You might want to have a cushion or a block in front to rest your forehead on, or you can bring the head down towards the floor. So you're working on bringing the crown of the head towards the floor and wrapping the arms around the sides of the body. So you're reaching back towards your feet. But as I said, Using a cushion or a block to rest your head is perfect. 
finding and adjusting as needed. Breathe into the, all the space that's extended here. So when we do forward folds, you should also do back bends, which we've done quite a bit of both now. And then bring the hands underneath the shoulder again, pressing the floor away, coming into an upright position. And we'll just come into a gentle camel. So breathing in, coming up onto the knees. If you need to have the blanket under the knees here, if you don't already, placing it there. Hands onto the lower back. And check that your feet are in line with your knees. So when you look behind you, you should see your heels in line with the backs of the knees. And pressing the hips forward. So the fingers are pointing down towards the knees or towards your buttocks. Your elbows are coming towards each other. Breathing in, lifting up out of the pelvic bowl, breathing out, pressing the hips forward and just opening up the front of the body. Now, if you feel that that's too much on the head or neck, keep the gaze forwards. This is a back bend, so you don't need to bring the head all the way back. And continue to breathe. And then coming back upright, leaning forward, bringing the hands down onto the floor. Sway the hips from side to side. Hands on the floor again, coming up. Hands to the lower back, breathing in, lifting up out of the pelvic bowl, pressing the hips forward and opening up the front of the body. Now keep the left hand where it is and then sweep the right arm up towards the ceiling. So you're reaching back with your right arm. You could even bring the gaze to the left if you like. So it's almost giving you a side body stretch now as well. And then bring the gaze forward, bring the arm down, bring the upper body forward, arms down on the floor and sway the hips. Hands onto the floor again, coming back upright. Hands to the lower back, lifting up out of the pelvic bowl, pressing the hips forward, elbows are coming towards each other, opening up the front of the body, sweeping the left arm up, looking back towards the hand, and then you can bring the gaze to the right if you like. So you're pressing the hips forward and also trying to keep the glutes soft. I'm trying to soften the tummy muscles as well, even though we're trying to hold everything together. Bring the gaze back upwards, arm back down onto the back, and then slowly coming up and forward. Hands down to the floor, sway the hips from side to side. And then coming upright. Sitting down on the floor again. We're going to lie down on our backs. So coming down onto the floor, you can just roll back if you're comfortable doing that. Gives a nice little massage to the back and roll the legs a couple of times. So you massage the length of the spine or you might even stop in the middle and roll from side to side or use your legs to roll all the way up and massage the glutes as well. You can just roll from side to side. So rolling back, rolling up. And then the next time you come down, just staying here. Bring the knees into the chest, wrap from side to side. Bring the hands onto the fronts of the knees, draw a little circle with the back in one direction, a circle with the back in the other direction. Extend the left leg along the floor, straight. Toes are pointing up towards the ceiling, but hover the heel off the floor, bringing the opposite leg into the chest. So the right knee is into the chest. The left leg is straight, hovering off the floor. And then change legs. So the left knee comes into the chest. The right leg is extended, but hovering off the floor. And then bring both knees into the chest and bring the knees wide. 
and just rock from side to side, massaging the lower back. If you can, you're reaching through between the knees to bring the hands around the outside edges of the feet and bring the soles of the feet up towards the ceiling into happy baby. So what happens here is that we're massaging the lower back as we rock from side to side. So your hands are on the outside edges of your feet on the little toe side and your elbows are inside your knees. And then releasing the hands, placing the feet flat on the floor and bringing the arms out to the sides. So if you'd like to, if your back is a little bit tight, getting some cushions underneath the knees and allowing the soles of the feet to come together and the knees to come out to the side or cushions under the knees and extend the legs out in a supported Shavasana. If you feel that you don't want to have any supports underneath the knees, that's absolutely fine. But uh, it's a really nice way to send a message to the body for a restorative relaxation at the end of class. So nice blanket over you as well. A couple of grounding breaths just to release and let go of all effort. I'll just read you this short little statement and then I'll give you a couple of minutes in silence and then I'll ring the gong when we're at the end of practice. So true yoga is not about the shape of your body but the shape of your life. Yoga isn't to be performed, it's to be lived. Yoga doesn't care about who you have been. Yoga cares about the person you are becoming. Bringing the awareness back to the senses, rubbing the fingertips, wiggling the toes, noticing the sensation of any clothing, maybe socks or blanket, maybe the touch on the mat. Taking a nice deep breath in through the nose, noticing any smells, maybe the taste in your mouth. Any sounds within the room or beyond the room? Any colors or any shapes from behind your closed eyes? And also how the mind is feeling. So if the knees aren't already bent up, just bending them up towards the ceiling, gently swaying them from side to side. When you're ready, just rolling over onto one side to rest there for a moment.
curling up in that nice C shape. Releasing all effort, tucking the chin in towards the chest and bringing the arms around you. And then when you're ready, using the upper hand, to press the floor away, coming into an upright seat position. Keeping your eyes closed, so staying in your space, in your sacred mat space within your home. And bringing the hands together, rubbing the hands together, noticing the sensation of the skin, the shape of the hands, of the fingers. Placing the hands very gently at the top of the head, a little bit of pressure as we press and release. Bringing the hands around to the fronts of the eyes. Little pressure as we press and release. Hands onto the sides of the face along the jawline. Just a really gentle little press and release. And the hands down onto either side of the neck and throat. A gentle little pressure maybe with the fingertips on the back of the neck and release. And then hands onto the heart. Take a nice deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Left hand on the lower tummy, right hand on the upper tummy. Nice big deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. And then hands together in prayer position, pressing the thumbs to the heart center. Bowing the head and recalling the intention that you set yourself at the beginning of class. Or if there was anything that came up either physically or emotionally that you wanted to acknowledge for yourself. Just acknowledging it without judgment and going, that's interesting and thank you for telling me. It's thanking your body for sharing the experience with you. And connecting your mind, your body and your breath. So as you go into this long weekend, just bringing to mind the meta meditation, may I be well, may I be happy and healthy, may I be free from suffering, may I be free from anger. And taking the time whenever you need it. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you next week. Namaste.